Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. I am surrounded here by four beautiful blocks of oyster mushroom mycelium. And the reason is, I've been getting a lot of questions, a lot of comments from viewers, asking about how best to initiate the fruiting cycle. Once you have nicely colonized blocks, what's the next step? How do you get mushrooms? I get people commenting saying, okay, I followed your grain spawn video. I made some grain spawn. I spawned that to pasteurize fuel pellets. Now I have this beautifully colonized block, but I just can't get it to make any mushrooms. Uh, what do I do next? So that's what this video is going to be all about. We're going to be working with oyster mushrooms. As I mentioned, I have two different strains here. These are both from Gary at Fresh Fungi. They are both listed as Pleurotus pulmonera strains. This is a commercial blue. This is a black falcon. They are both considered commercial, aggressive oyster strains. And a lot of people, when they first start growing, they start out with oysters. So I figured that would be a good species to work with for this video. But keep in mind that even though we are working with oysters, the techniques I'm going to show you will apply to a lot of different species of, especially your wood-loving gourmet mushrooms that people are typically growing. Your, your herichium, your lion's mane, your shiitakes, your chestnuts, uh, brick caps. First thing I'd like to say is sometimes it just takes a little patience. Especially when you first start out growing mushrooms, you know, you're watching your spawn grow, you're watching your bags colonize, and you just want it to happen right now. And I get it, I was the exact same way. But sometimes it just does take some patience. Some species take a little while to fruit. Even different strains of the same species can behave differently. So keep that in mind, and your conditions may be fine. It may just take a little patience, but there's other factors that come into play here too. You have temperature, humidity. We're gonna talk a lot about temperature manipulation in this video. But the other thing that plays a huge role is genetics. And a lot of new growers don't realize how important genetics are in growing mushrooms. Having a really good, strong, aggressive strain is super important to being successful in growing mushrooms, even at the hobby level. Just as an example, I've grown a lot of different king oyster strains over the years, and the one I'm growing now, some other ones I've grown, they just fruit really aggressively at 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's about what it is in my basement typically. And these strains, they'll just they'll fruit really aggressively about a week after full colonization, at 65 degrees, get beautiful mushrooms, boom, not a lot of effort. And then I've grown other strains that just do not want to fruit at those temperatures. I try cold shocking them, doing different things, and they will pin and produce mushrooms eventually, but it can be a pain and it can be frustrating. So keep that in mind. If you're struggling with a particular culture, you can hit me up in comments. I can always make suggestions for you. I'm always happy to make suggestions on strains that I think will be conducive to your particular environment or just try a different culture. It may work out a lot better for you than the one that you're currently working with. So I mentioned we're gonna talk a lot about temperature manipulation and what I'm gonna do with these bags, because these are cold loving oyster mushroom strains, I would say, is we're gonna actually cold shock these. We're gonna move them into the refrigerator for about 48 hours and that's gonna shock these blocks into producing a really nice flush of mushrooms. I find that the cold shock method works really well, especially for these cold loving oyster strains, but it also works well with a lot of other gourmets that typically grow in the fall in the wild. So a lot of these strains that we're growing, they're naturally fruiting in the fall. It's the cooler temperatures and the moisture of the fall that trigger the mycelium into producing mushrooms. And we can kind of simulate that in an indoor environment by using this cold shock method to, uh, to get them to produce mushrooms sooner than they would on their own and also produce better first flushes. Now, if I just left these blocks go, they would pin eventually, but they'd probably be a little stressed out. We get a lot of metabolite and that's not always good. That can cause contamination and probably our first flush just wouldn't be as strong as it's going to be using this cold shock method. We wanna get any excess moisture metabolite off these blocks before we move them into the refrigerator. So what I'm gonna do, I don't wanna take a lot of plastic off, I don't wanna open these way up, 
I'm just gonna take a pair of scissors, nip a little corner off here. We're gonna pour the excess moisture and metabolite off these blocks, just onto a paper towel. I'll show you guys how I do that. And then after that, they're gonna go into the refrigerator. Now keep in mind that your refrigerator actually works like a dehydrator. You would know this if you ever put mushrooms in the refrigerator and left them uncovered for a couple days, they'll dry right out. So your blocks will do the same thing. And we don't wanna dry out the surface of our blocks cause that will really hurt your pinning or it can even totally inhibit it. So just nipping a little corner off is fine. You wouldn't wanna cut the tops off of these and then put them in the refrigerator. It's just gonna dry your blocks right out. All right guys, so this block is an excellent example. I will zoom in here a little bit. You can see this moisture right there. That's a little excess moisture metabolite and we do not want that sitting on the surface of our blocks. All right, so I just have my little cool little pink safety scissors here. Take the corner off the bag. And we're just gonna tip it upside down, pour it out on a paper towel. Once you get it all out of there, ready to go in the fridge. What do you think? Is that a good spot? He says yes. All right, we found room for him, guys. My garage fridge here, got them tucked in. This fridge is running at about 42 degrees Fahrenheit. As far as these things are concerned, winter is a coming, so that should shock them into producing some beautiful first flush oyster mushrooms for us. We shall see, but we'll check back in a couple days. All right, guys, we're back. We got the fruiting chamber rolling down the mushroom dungeon. I got it set to 85% humidity. Got our fan running for our air exchange. This uh, humidity chamber, if you guys haven't seen my other videos, I will post a link in the description. So super simple, fully automated fruiting chamber you can take anywhere, it's portable and it's a really nice design. So that's what I'm going to be using to fruit these blocks in. The cold shock is complete. I'm going to show you guys how I prep the blocks for fruiting. Next up, and if you guys have seen all my other videos, you guys have probably seen this process before. You can just skip this part. For you guys that haven't seen it, I'm going to go through it real quick. So for this step, you just need some packing tape. And I'm going to use a sharp scalpel here. You can also use an X-Acto knife. You just need a sharp blade. You can, there's lots of ways you can slate your bags. Lots of different theories. You can do a bunch of little X's here. You know, a couple on the side. What I'm going to do, what I've been doing mostly lately, is just one big slit here across the front. And the slit method is the way to go, I think. Just because these flaps that you create from making the X-shaped slit in the bag, those flaps kind of hold the humidity against the block. And that's what you want. You want super high humidity against the block for those pins to form. And with the fruiting chamber being set to 85% humidity or so, plus the flaps there, we're gonna have almost saturation humidity right against the surface of the block. And that's what we're looking for. So first thing is, I'm just gonna try and eliminate all of the airspace on the top of the block. So we're gonna just fold this back really tight like this. And I'm gonna fold it all the way back. And then we're gonna use a piece of packing tape just to hold that tight to the bag. So what we're trying to do is just eliminate all this airspace up on top because we don't want pins up here. We want our pins right here where we make our slits. piece of packing tape to hold it in place and I always clean my blade with just a little isopropyl before I cut my slits See there's a little excess moisture draining off there as well. Just kind of dab that up with a paper towel. But I try not to disturb the surface of the mycelium any more than I have to, but you are going to cut into it obviously because the plastic is tight. 
that's what you want. Not a big deal. That mycelium is going to recover and all of our pins should blow up. So like I said lately, I've just been doing a big X-shaped slit. Just one big one across the front of the bag. Should get a nice big cluster in the front here. So <clears throat> I'm going to do up the other four bags and then we'll get them into the fruiting chamber. Believe it or not, guys, it has only been a week since I pulled these out of the fridge and cut slits in the front of the bags to induce them to fruit. You do that cold shock and they absolutely explode. So my stems were getting a little long. Now, typically with these blue strains, they pin so heavily and they kind of crowd each other out that you're always going to get a little lengthening of the stem. But I'm trying to get them to flatten out a little more. So I actually increased my fan speed a little bit. I have this little 80 millimeter fan from House of Hydro and it comes with a controller on it so you can adjust the speed, which is really cool. And so I did just kick up my fan a little bit and hopefully that will get these to flatten out nicely. So these are the Black Falcons down here. That's the other Black Falcon block there. You can see I have some nice visible mist pumping into the chamber here and we're holding at about 85% humidity. And that seems to be working out really well. So the Black Falcon, obviously a really aggressive strain. You can see there's actually a lot of pinning under the plastic there. Even though the plastic was nice and tight, they are still blowing up under the plastic. But the idea is that you, if you leave those suffocated, those will abort and all the energy will go, go to your good fruits, which is what we're hoping is going to happen here. Seems to be happening okay. Uh, this is the Commercial Blues up here on top and they're three four days behind the black falcons not as much pinning under the plastic with these either they're a little more controlled a little more isolated to where we cut our x-slits so that's pretty cool so far i'm digging this strain they're just a little slower it's probably going to be about three four days these black falcons are going to be ready to pick so we'll jump back in then do some picking it's picking time for our first block. Check out that beast mode first flush. It's my first time growing this black falcon strain. And I'm pretty impressed so far. It looks awesome. They are ready to pick. Uh, you generally want to get your oysters before these cap margins totally flatten out. They are still slightly incurved. I did get a little stem elongation. That's kind of normal for me with these, these cold blue strains. Um, they make crazy amount of pins. I always tell people that oysters are the eternal optimists of the mushroom world because they always make way more pins than they can nutritionally support. But see, we have a bunch of small pins in the center here, but we don't have aborts. I don't see any yellow or brown discoloration on any of these pins. So overall, that's a really nice first flush. And this is unsupplemented substrate. This is just unsupplemented pasteurized hardwood fuel pellets. I mixed in a pound of wheat grain spawn. So I got the scale out. We're gonna pick this first flush off and see how we did. I had to sit it up on my tub here because it's got these low, these oysters were just trying to get out wherever they could and I got some one down real low here. These pulmonary strains, usually the Stems aren't super tough either, so hopefully uh, it'll be somewhat edible. Sometimes with the Ostriatus strains, these stems get really tough, but usually the Pulmonera strains, they're nice and nice and tender down to a certain point. When you get right near the base, they get kind of tough, but be able to eat a good part of that stem probably. Another beautiful cluster there. All right, that's it. They picked off really nicely. You can see I did take a little substrate with me, but not a big deal. You want freshly exposed mycelium anyway for your second flush. I'm going to put these right back in the fruiting chamber, and hopefully the second flush is going to appear right here in the same area. All right, so here we go. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's uh, just, just a hair under one pound for the first flush, so... It's a really nice flush for an unsupplemented block. I mean, if you're just growing for yourself or for you and some friends, family, whatever, this pasteurized fuel pellet with unsupplemented substrate, it's super easy, pretty foolproof. You can get away with it even without a flow hood, no problem. And you can get some absolutely beautiful mushrooms. So really nice first flush, just a hair under a pound. 
I got 15 and 5 8 ounces there. Have the scale fired up again. I want to see what this one weighs. These actually pick really easy too. They kind of remind me of the Grey Dove strain of oyster. You can get that at Field and Forest Products or Mycelium Emporium. Similar in structure, but I noticed they do pick a little easier. Like they're not super tenaciously attached to the substrate, which is kind of cool. You can just kind of twist them off. You got pretty consistent weights between the two blocks. We've got just over 15 ounces with this one as well. So I got almost two pounds of beautiful oyster mushrooms off these two blocks. So I just want to interject and show you guys that. Pretty consistent flushes. That one was an absolute monster flush, but the weight was actually pretty similar. All right, so real quick, I want to talk about too that, so say you think your block's ready to fruit, you cut your X slit in your block, put it in your fruiting chamber, and nothing happens. Your humidity's fine, everything's good, but it just won't fruit for you. So you decide you want to do that cold shock. What you need to do is you need to protect this area of exposed mycelium. So wherever you've opened your bag or slit it, you need to protect that if you're going to put your bag in the refrigerator for a couple days. And the reason is your refrigerator acts like a dehydrator and it'll just dry the surface of your mycelium out and it will, it will pan. What that means is this mycelial surface here will get almost shiny, smooth and shiny looking. And at that point, once it pans like that, if it dries out, it will not produce mushrooms. It's just not going to do it. So you need to protect your blocks once, if you've already compromised the bag in any way, if you're going to put them in the fridge for a couple of days. So usually what I recommend when people are having this issue is just loosely wrap them in another plastic bag. You can even mist in that bag, that second bag a little bit, spray a little clean water in there, mist it loosely wrap your block and then you can go ahead and put that in the fridge for a couple days and that will protect your block from drying out all right guys we're gonna call it a wrap here with some beautiful oyster harvest footage so the moral of the story is temperature manipulation can really help you out in your mushroom grows so commercial growers they use temperature manipulation all the time but they have really complex automated hvac systems to you know, drop temperature when they're ready to go to the fruiting cycle. But as home cultivators on a low budget, we can mimic the exact same thing with this cold shock method, just using a refrigerator. And you can get some beautiful first flushes just like this. It does definitely help you speed up your first flush and it seems to increase the yields on the first flush for me as well. Now, you do not have to cold shock for additional flushes. It's really only a first flush thing. I will just put those blocks right back in the fruiting chamber and let them ride and they should go ahead and pop right in the same areas where I just harvested from. I'm working with oyster mushrooms here, obviously, but I do use this exact same method when I'm growing other species as well. Lion's mane, uh, definitely king oyster, Pleurotus orengi, loves a good cold shock, shiitake, maitake, so it works for a lot of different species, this exact same method. You would not want to use this method for any tropical species like your, your pink oyster, your golden oyster, your Garicus blazi, anything like that. Any real warm, loving tropical strains because refrigerator temperatures can actually either harm or kill those cultures. So you want to keep those out of fridge temps. But any of the other mushrooms that are typically cool weather fruiters, which are a lot of your wood-loving gourmets, including a lot of oyster strains, this method works awesome. So hit me up in comments, let me know what you guys think, and I will catch you next video.